Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Z Learning right here at Riverbank Zoo and Garden. My name is Milo, and today it is a very sunny afternoon, but we are so excited because you all get to see a very special otter training session, not indoors behind the scenes, but actually out on habitat. Look at behind me. You can actually see all the guests all lined up and ready. They know something's going on. There's keepers that are up here behind the habitat with me. Of course, in honor of National Zookeeper Week, we're gonna be spending a little bit of time with Christina, one of our mammal keepers who specifically cares for our otters and a whole slew of other mammals here at the zoo. In fact, if you saw her meet the keeper post yesterday, late in the day, her picture was the one really up close and personal with one of our koalas. And hopefully you read her great responses to shed a little bit of light into what does a keeper life look like and what does their day-to-day -day routine entail? Because their dedication to taking care of our animals is oh so important and we could not do it without them. So good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Z Learning. I know it's an odd time of day, but let me tell you, this is the best time of day for otter training. It fits the best in our keeper schedule, but I'll be honest, the otter sisters down here below us are very ready. They have been eagerly swimming back and forth because they know there is a special surprise for them. So without further ado, let me go ahead and turn around a little bit. I'm gonna turn around this camera and say, hey to Christina. Hello. Now, Christina, your last feature with us actually was eons ago. It was months and months ago. It was actually with these otters. It was with the otters, exactly. I was gonna say, but that time we were actually inside the building getting an up close view of the otters. But let me go ahead and pan right on over here. You can see a little bit better we are literally on top of the habitat right now. So that back rock work is kind of our perspective, but the sisters are gonna be swimming back and forth. But today, Christina, we're gonna be doing a training session. Now, this is a part of their normal routine, is it not? Yeah, so we aim to do this every single afternoon. It's usually around this time where they get their lunch feeding, um, but we try to make it really fun for them and active. So we'll have them <laughs> go all over the habitat. You can see Sophie right here is ready for me. She's ready to go. Um, they have their stations, which you'll actually ask, hear me ask for, which is that log that she was just on. Oh, and perfect. then the okay. whole point of this training is to um, make sure they're getting their exercise in for the day. So we're going to have them go to a bunch of different spaces on the habitat, and then they'll always get that fish afterwards. So they're getting exercise and lunch at the same time. Perfect. So what that means is that for all of you tuning in live right now, it means we're going to be zipping around to the otters, trying to keep a good view on them. So if there's a little bit of camera movement, bear with us because Christina is going to be doing an amazing job. Now, just a quick shout out. I'm going to see if I can get a little bit of a perspective. Maybe we can see Catherine. <laughs> but we spent a little bit of time with Catherine on Tuesday over with our lions. But there are two otters, which means during a training session, there has to be two keepers. It works better that way. That way we're not playing favorites. But Christina, if you're ready, I think I'm ready. We're just going to kind of sit back just like we did with Patrick yesterday and let the keepers and the animals do their things. And then the keepers will chat with us a little bit afterwards, but it looks like, ooh, delicious. Not for me and not for you. <laughs> <laughs> that is a perfect snack for the otters. What yeah. are we eating today? Um, Capeling and smelt. Ooh, delicious. Now the otters do get live fish though too, but they this do. is much more helpful and easier for you for training us. Yes. <laughs> live fish later this afternoon they get cool. it every tuesday and friday but that's usually towards the end of the day so shout out to anybody that's out in the park maybe tuning in live on facebook come back to the otter exhibit later today and they'll actually have live fish in their habitat i'm ready whenever you are do your thing right, Catherine, ready? Yeah. oh stevie i just saw your question these two otters both of our sisters actually were born at a zoo up in Illinois. It's an accredited zoo. It's actually AZ accredited in Bloomington, Illinois. But let me go ahead and see. I saw a couple of other questions. Oh, Andrea, how does Christina tell the girls apart? All the way. What are you doing? It's very challenging. They are full sisters, which means that they look a whole lot alike, but there is a slight size difference between the two. And that's one of the easiest ways to tell the girls apart. Let me go ahead and zoom in though, now that she's hanging out in the water. <laughs> She's a little distracted by you, Milo. I was going to say, there's this weird guy up on the back side of their exhibit and they don't know who I am. I'll try not to take that personally. Oh, good. 
but we are going to be zooming all back and forth. Like Christina said, this is important for their exercise, for their mental stimulation, plus relationship building with our keepers, of course, too. Great questions, everybody. Keep them coming in. I know we have a lot of big otter fans out there. Oh, Faith, you are so observant. I'm so impressed that you were able to see that floating duck. There is a plastic duck decoy on the side of the habitat that, yes, is enrichment for the otters. So enrichment comes in the form of lots of different items from novel objects to food to training. So Faith, very good observation. You're absolutely right. Enrichment for the otters. Oh, look at her. She's doing such a great job. Rebecca, do they eat fruits and veggies? No, not a whole lot, but yes, they do eat a little bit of vegetables. Not a ton of fruit though. Otters much prefer their fishy snacks. Oh, this is a unique question from Sandy. I see your question about how do we teach them their names? Because of course that's important with their care. It's not necessarily required, but it definitely makes it easier to manage them. And one of the easiest ways for me to explain how do they learn their names, it's the same way that you learned your own name or your pets learn their name, repetition. Repetition and then acknowledgement. Oh, y'all are getting such a great view though of this training session. Oh, Ephraim, yes, otters absolutely can bite. They have a mouth full of very sharp canine teeth, which are perfectly made for fishing and hunting. But because they are potentially dangerous animals with those very sharp chompers, our keepers don't hang out with our otters. They don't go inside this habitat with them. They are wild animals. So instead we give them their personal space and this training session can efficiently be done right up top of the roof right here. Let me kind of scoot back, not tumble over all of our plants. I want to get you a view of what it looks like as Christina is requesting these behaviors, cueing the behavior, and then actually reinforcing it and rewarding it. Oh, all of you that are sending in those great questions, keep them coming. Once we're done focusing on the otters, we're actually going to pause up here, give them a little bit of enrichment, and y'all will have a perfect opportunity to ask questions of Christina. Oh, BB, good question. Can the otters use tools like Patrick to help with food? Well, I will say a bravo to Patrick, not nearly as well as he can. Otters do occasionally use tools. In fact, I can give an example of sea otters that use rocks to go ahead and crack open some of their clams or sea urchins. So tool use is definitely something that you can find all throughout the mammal kingdom, um, but definitely much more prevalent with primates like Patrick. And yes, Cynthia, there are only two otters. These are our two sisters. We have a non-breeding group. Thankfully, river otters out in the wild have very stable numbers. So these two are ambassadors for their species because what I always like to say is literally right here on the lower Saluda River, just outside of the zoo, we can find wild river otters. But you know, I've been here for riverbanks for five years now and I have never seen a river otter out in the wild right outside of our gates. So having these two otters here is a great way for us to make a true riverbanks connection with our local environment. It sounds like we're wrapping up. They're going to go ahead and do the, the last fish. Let's go ahead and zoom on in though. Good job. Uh, hopefully got such a great view of her. Right. So right now what the keepers are going to do, now that the otters are kind of wrapped up, let's go ahead and get a little bit different of a view. Zoom on back. Oh, we got some enrichment heading out into the pool. It's an extra special day for the otters today. Oh my goodness, those big splashes. I don't know if you're going to hear it on live right now, but the guests are going crazy for that. They're loving all this excitement. They had no idea that this was in the schedule. But Christina, I'm going to go out on the limb here and I'm going to say those aren't just plastic balls. I'm going to guess there's something inside. <laughs> what did you hide inside of those balls today? Oh, so it's not just fish like shoved into the holes. There's actually frozen 
So it's, they have to wait for it to melt then, don't they? Yep. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna say, there's one that yeah, they so they put out over on land. Her, <laughs> oh, she's um, grabbing another one here. Let me zoom in. I'm sorry, I'm like all over the place, oh, folks. Fine. Oh, she grabbed both of them and she propped them up. Oh, she's a pro. Yeah, she's so done she this before. She realizes that it's not super easy to get them out, so she's having to trade back and forth trying <laughs> to get the fish out, waiting for it to melt a little bit. Well, um, and that's such a good point too, because you threw in multiple. It's not just one ball, so they don't have to worry about sharing, do they? Nope. So we always do multiple. Yep. Um, Her corner, she had her gathered um, while Savannah 